the gate on the question and answer uh, area if you can hear my voice and see the opening screen and uh, we will get underway forthwith. Great, sounds coming through clearly. We're ready to roll. Excellent, good to see you all here. We have a large number of people in the room tonight, so we'll get underway uh, straight away. I do have one uh, protocol that I like to keep in the room, uh, and that is you're asked to uh, post your questions in real time. We uh, un uh, unfold. Uh, it makes creates more of a dialogue than a coma inducing monologue, and that's what I like to do. It makes it more interesting for everybody, including me. Hello to all of the regulars in the room. There are really people I have to do my best to answer the questions as they come up, and uh, so with that we will begin. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is Seth Julian. I'm uh, the chief uh, global strategist here at Alvex Trading. I'm 64 years old. And I've been trading in the capital markets for over 51 years. Um, I trade mostly commodities and um, and stocks, although I do often trade forex and uh, a bond. It's been a very good market as so well. So again, please ask your questions to me uh, in real time, and uh, we'll get right underway. Price action trade, not hunting as it sounds. Keep it simple. This is a straightforward presentation tonight, ladies and gentlemen. You don't probably need uh, pens and pencils or notes. We're not going to do any calculations. It's not like some of our other sessions are a little more involved. This is a straightaway affair. And so there's lagging with my connection, I hear. Sound is distorted. Your voice quality is not good. Hmm. Let me see what I can do about that moment, please. I see what I can do about the audio. Well, according to my, the audio is good. Um, voice jarring. My, I'm in shit. Um, how is it now? Is it any better? Perhaps I was speaking a little too quick. No good, says Ned. Better, says Shaykhar. Uh, let me get a couple of more tricks here. Um, stop that. Cut out a few things here, perhaps. Um, just give me one more second. I apologize for this, but it's better to spend the time now. And um, Week, it's worth the investment. We can make things sound better. Um, still, same, unfortunately. Um, pretty much the only thing I could possibly do is to exit and enter, and I'm loath to do that. Um, how is it now, ladies and gentlemen? Is there, is there any improvement at all? Yes, a little better. All right, a little better. Okay, better. No, great. I cut cut out a few systems that were running in the background. Better. All right, great. So let's get underway. Price action describes the characteristics of securities price movement. That's all. It means the movement in price. So if you're ready, you're put off by the. Price action movement sounding complicated. Don't let it put you off. It just means the way the price of an asset moves. That's all price action means. The move, this movement is quite often analyzed with respect to prices change, price changes in the recent past. In simple terms, price action is a trading technique that allows a trader to read the market and make subjective trading decisions based on the recent actual price movements rather than relying solely on technical indicators. It's a subjective method, ladies and gentlemen. It's a method that we use, um, many of us use, myself included. I look at a chart, I think I understand what it's likely to do. I make my calculations and I take the position. If I'm right, I make money. If I'm wrong, I cut my losses and exit the position. That's the long and the short of it. And most of us trade that way, whether we know it or admit it or not. Now, since it ignores 
the fundamental analysis factors and focuses more on recent and past price movement, the price action trading st strategy is dependent on technical analysis tools. Not only you, I, I, I shouldn't say we must, but I will always, or, or let me state it in the opposite, I will never enter position unless I understand at some level the fundamentals. I'm risk averse. I do not like taking unnecessary risk. I don't like losing. So I do all that I can to empower myself to be in a position to have as much of an edge, as much of an advantage as I can possibly get. Now, many traders focus on price action trading strategies, strategies to quickly generate a profit over a short time frame. This is not a long-term uh, investment strategy. This is a short-term trading strategy. For example, they may look for a simple breakout from the session's high, enter a long position, and use strict money management strategies to generate the profit. I emphasize the strict money management uh, um, aspect of this. Never enter a position without placing your stop losses, your take profit and your stop loss. That's imprudent. I don't do it. You shouldn't do it. Nobody in there, nobody in the business that's uh, that's in this business in order to make money over the long run doesn't do that. Several tools and software platforms can be used to trade price action, including our own. Tools used for price action trading. Since price action trading relates to recent historical data and past price movements, all technical analysis tools like charts, trend lines, price bands, high and low swings, technical levels, support and resistance and consolidation, et cetera, are considered as per, as per the trader's choice of strategy fit. We, by the way, after we're done with this little presentation, we'll go to some real charts and we'll take a look at what I'm talking about here. But I want you to understand the fundamentals and therefore we'll, um, we're, that's why we're running through the uh, presentation as we are. Still getting a little bit negative feedback here about the sound. Just let me do one more check. Really bad sound. Is that still the case, ladies and gentlemen? How, how, how am I sounding? I, I'm sorry to see all these complaints better not better breaking up really bad good for me says william it could be we've got a lot of people in the room so it could be a function simply of it's, it's rough it's better now not too bad we can continue good for me good for me. all right that's it i'm done asking now um since price action trading relates to, oh, uh, I, I said that, right. the tools and patterns observed by the trader can be simple price bars, price bands, breakouts, trend lines, or complex combinations involving candlesticks, volatility channels, etc. Do not be put off by these terms, ladies and gentlemen, especially for the newbies and the newcomers uh, among us. Uh, oftentimes, there's a daunting um, sense of ignorance that that pervades our our our, our uh, approach to trading I, i'm here to tell you that this is not that's in, in fact it's in the title of the session not as daunting as it sounds don't be put off by anything i say or read here i'm going to show you shortly in the charts that it's 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 uh, remarkably simple and straightforward psychological and behavioral interpretations and subsequent actions as decided by the trader also make up an important aspect of price action trading for example, no matter what happens if a stock hovering at 580 crosses the personally set psychological level of 600, then the trader may assume a further upward movement to take a longer position. Other traders may have the opposite view. Once it hits 600, they assume the price reversal and takes a short position. Do you get my message here? This is a subjective affair. We have the tools, we have the the, the chart analysis tools and the technical analysis tools, and I use some of them myself, although I'm a firm believer in less is more when it comes to technicals, and here I'm speaking again to the newbies, there's often a tendency to think the more indicators you have, the more likely you are to be profitable. In fact, the opposite is true. Uh, and I won't go into this uh, too specifically, but suffice to say in statistics, there is a, uh, a rule called the um, degrees of freedom. And that means simply stated, the more limitations you put on a, uh, on a on a decision, in or out, yes or no, buy, sell, the less likely you are to run into an opportunity where that decision becomes actually applicable. So just let's leave it at that for the time being. We'll, we'll deal with the questions later on. 
Now, no true trader, no two traders will interpret a certain price action in the same way. That's why it's subjective. That's why you need to be in control of your own psychological um, uh, uh, predilections uh, in order to profit here. And what I mean by that is quite simple. And when you when you get into a trade and you make money, you've got to understand that your uh, greed will start to warp your logic and sensibilities. Um, you'll lose sight of the fact that it's money, that it's a trade, that there's risk involved here. And let me take uh, uh, my standard digression by stating you should not be trading with money you cannot afford to lose. This is these are the capital markets, and there's risk involved here. And risk is quite strictly quite simply stated the probability of the unexpected occurring for occur it does and therefore you must be prepared for it and be um, uh, informed enough to, to recognize it um here are the steps and well most experienced traders following price action trading keep multiple options for recognizing patterns and that means just to keep an open mind entry and exit level stop losses and related observations that's it the long and the short of it there's not much more to it than this having just one strategy on one or multiple stocks may not offer sufficient trading opportunities so most in scenarios involve a two-step process and this is a gross oversimplification but i want you to understand it identifying a scenario look at a stock getting into a bull or bear phase channel range breakout etc pretty simple again don't be overwhelmed we're going to get to some charts shortly within this scenario moving average crossover up trend down whatever identifying trading opportunities like once a stock is in a bull run is it likely to a overshoot or b retreat this is a completely subjective choice and can vary from one trader to the other even given the same identical scenario again highly subjective there are a few examples stock reaches its high as per the trader's view and then retreats to a to a slightly lower level that's the scenario is met the trader then can decide whether they want to think it will form a double top to go higher or drop further following a reversion to the mean. The trader sets a floor and ceiling for a particular stock price based on the assumption of low volatility and no breakouts. Happens sometimes. The stock price lies in this range, the scenario is met. The trader can take positions assuming that the set floor or ceiling acting as support or resistance or take levels or take an alternative view that the stock will break out in either direction. Again, th th there are only two possibilities, moves up or moves down. A defined breakout scenario being met and then trading opportunity existing in terms of a breakout continuation going further in the same direction or a breakout pullback returning to the, the past level. This can be seen price action trading is closely assisted by technical analysis tools. And we'll show you those tools in a minute, moving averages, um, support and resistance le levels. And I'll show you how to, to identify them if you're with the naked eye. It's not that complicated. Um, Price action trading is better suited for short to medium term limited profit trades instead of long term investments. I think I said that. That should be obvious to you. And again, if it isn't, please feel free to ask. Most traders believe that the market fall is a random pattern and there is no clear systematic way to define a strategy that will always work. I um, subscribe to that largely with notable exceptions. By combining the technical analysis tools with the recent price history to identify trade opportunities based on the trader's own interpretation, and I cannot emphasize that enough, this is about us individuals, our point of view, not about taking tips and signals and all sorts of other uh, distractions, really, um, that are available that prevent us from developing our own sensibilities about what the market's going to do. Uh, price action support has a lot of support in the price action trading route has a lot of support in the trading community. Advantages include your self-defined strategies, offering flexibility, applicability to multiple asset classes. It's easy to use with any trading stock, applications and trading portals, and the possibility of e easy back testing of any identified strategy on past data. And that's easy to do. I'll show you how. Most importantly, the traders feel in charge as the strategy allows them to decide on the scenarios and actions instead of blindly following a set of rules. I cannot emphasize the importance uh, enough, that is, I can't emphasize enough the importance of your ability to feel confident about how you're trading. It's crucial. So what does price action mean? Price action refers to the pattern or character of how the price of a security or asset behaves. That's it, particularly in the short run. 
Price action can be analyzed when it is plotted graphically over time. That's your graph, that's your chart. Often in the form of a line chart or candlestick chart, what does price action tell you? Technical analysis analysts look at price action on charts to look for patterns or indicators that can help predict how a security will behave in the future and to time entry and exit into trades. Let, let, let me digress here for a moment and say this. Why is it important or why do I feel, many people as well, by the way, feel that it's important to grasp the, psycho, the psychology of these movements? Because a lot of times, again, particularly for the newcomers, you're going to see these charts and graphs and they look like NASA. They look like, uh, the, the, you know, something out of the Cosmodrome out of Kazakhstan. It looks just as scientific as scientific could, can be. Wrong, it ain't. All these charts and graphs do is, is measure or graph, literally graph, human emotional attachment to an asset. No more and no less. How are people, how, are this, how is the market, how are people feeling about this asset? Now, you're going to hear the commentary. I'm sure you do. You hear the commentary at bloviate endlessly about why things happen. Gold is up today because of this. It's bullshit. They don't trade. They don't know what they're talking about. They make things up to sound informed and so they can fill the airtime. Don't believe it. They don't trade, they don't know, that, and they certainly aren't taking surveys of traders. They just tell you, well, it's up today on fear. It's down today because of this. And, uh, don't pay any attention to that. What you have to do is develop your ability to sense what the emotionality is in the price movement. And I'll show you that in a moment. And by the way, uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, another limitation is that past price action is not always a valid predictor of future outcomes. While that is largely true, and the disclaimers all over the place say that, um, the past is definitely an indication of the future. There's, there's no two ways about it. Don't be misled. It's not a perfect indicator. And that's why I say there's risk in these markets, because they do often not behave as we expect them to. But when they do behave as we expect them to, it's because we understood where they came from. So as a result, technical traders should employ a range of tools to confirm indicators and prepare to exit trade quickly if their predictions prove incorrect. Let me repeat that. They should be prepared to exit trades quickly if their predictions prove incorrect. That's called limiting your loss. That's called staying in the market. That's called being defensive and prudent. You must do that if you expect to be profitable over the long term. So what's the bottom line? A lot of theories and strategies are available in price action trading, claiming high success rates, but traders should be aware of survivorship bias. That means that as only success stories make news, trading does, does in other words, the people who bombed out, you don't, they're not on the news. You don't hear about them. They don't write books. So again, I, I emphasize the utter importance of minimizing losses and limiting your losses. Otherwise, you won't have enough trading capital left and you'll be constantly forced to fund, refund your account so that you can continue trading. It's depressing, it wears you down, eventually you'll get tired of this business. Uh, and just let me say a, a couple of other things in this score. I, to be, you know, in the interest of full disclosure, while I am 64 years old and been trading for over 50 years, a half a century already, it's a little daunting to even say that, I lost my trading account three times in my life, twice with quite sizable sums of money until I learned the ropes. And so the 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 uh, tuition in this business is cash and if you're not prepared to pay up the tuition to learn don't expect that you'll be able to be profitable over the long term and let me say another thing in this particular digression concerning concerning uh, concerning this um well let me not I, I, i'm getting i don't want to digress too much um, it's possible to the individual trader to clearly understand, test, select, decide, and act on what meets the requirements for the best possible profit opportunities for her, for him, for us. All right. That really ends the formal part of our presentation. And so now I want to go to the graphs and, um, and start to take a look at what's happening uh, in the world and see if we can identify some opportunities. So I'm calling up. Oh, sorry. I'm calling up now. Uh, this is the MT4 platform. Let's see if there are any questions in the meantime. Uh, Oki asks, "What technical anal analysis will be always? Will technical analysis be always overcome by fundamental analysis?" And yes, the the uh, session is being recorded, and you'll all receive a link to it uh, in an hour or two once it's processed, and and uh, and and uh, you'll you'll get a link to it. Now, 
let me say this, nothing Trump, you need both. Anybody who tells you they can make money just looking at a chart doesn't, is, is likely not making money. Um, although, uh, and here, here's a good example. See this, this is gas. Those of you who listen regularly to our broadcasts on the internet and get our signals and read our uh, the products we produce here, understand that we've been beating the drum of natural gas for exactly uh, three months. Why is that? Because of the war in Europe. Uh, and, and and this is this is tapping to natural gas. Uh, and, and so to talk a, a little bit about um, uh, uh, some technical tools, these these are uh, exponential moving average. These, by the way, ladies, well, I'll show you on another chart. Let me just show you on another chart all the technical tools I use. They are visible here. This is TradingView. This is uh, the best charting uh, software available on the internet. It's free. Uh, I pay a small amount uh, monthly to get a couple of extra indicators that are not utterly necessary. But what I want to point out to you is this. Uh, I keep a fairly lean uh, chart. It includes the three moving averages, the pink at 20, the blue at 50, the brown at 200. And so that, and, and let me explain a little bit about my technicals here so that you know uh, how I think, how what I trade. Uh, price is just a a, a a singular data point. I tell you, I ask you, what's the price of, of Alibaba? It's 93.83. Is that high? Is it low? Do you know if that's below? Mark? You don't know. You, you need to know what the value is. And value simply is price over time. And we calculate that through an average of simple moving average. And I use exponential moving averages, but they're largely identical. The only add advantage of the exponential moving average is that it uh, slightly weights. It gives a slight exponent to the later data in the set uh, on the assumption that later data is more important than older data. That's all. But, but if you drew a simple average line for the 2050 and the 200, you'd find them largely the same. Uh, I use volume, but volume is, is, is uh, I think it just comes naturally. Or if it doesn't come naturally, you should look at volume because there are five data points and let me just digress a little bit here about technical trading in a general way. There are five data points, four data output by every, many of them five. Those data points are, I'm just making this the opening price at the beginning of the time interval, the closing price at the beginning of the time interval, the highest price reached during that interval, and the lowest price reached during that interval. It's the four basic data points and the volume that occurred during the interval. That's it. All technical indicators are comprised of those five data points, period. There's some manipulation here. This is the only other indicator I use. This is called Elder's Force Index. And all it does is take the distance between the opening and the closing, the up or down, and then uh, add in the volume. And it gives us a histogram of a, a oversold or overbought, that's it. And I do average it with that line and as I do average the volume so I can tell whether it's above average or not. That's the whole thing. It's all, oh yes, and this uh, indicator, this is volume on time. It shows me for each time interval, whether it's a day, week, month, year, hour, second, minute, how much volume took place during that time interval. This is a volume chart of price. This tells me, at any given price, how much volume occurred. And this big orange line is the median, the mean of the distribution of volume during price. So we see that in this data set, in this band that you see the averages move and vary, very little took place here. The vast majority of the volume trading data set takes place here. So this shows you that there's a lot of momentum, a lot of um, sentiment behind the prices that are uh, in this range. That's it. That's all. I mean. The idea is like this. With respect to technicals and particularly with respect to price, um, price action trade. We are, as human beings, innately gifted with the ability to recognize patterns. We 
uh, and then this has evolved over the millennia from you know living uh, out in the wild, seeing the shadows of predators as we hide behind um, bushes or in the cave, we can make out a lot of information from subtleties. Um, they say that the a child of, 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 of one year old of average intelligence can distinguish between a friendly and a dangerous face simply by recognizing patterns that the child sees in the face. Now think about how sophisticated and complex an intellectual task that is for a kid who can't even talk, yet he's able to distinguish between a friend and a foe. So identifying patterns in a price chart is pretty elementary for our brain. And I'm not talking about genius brains. I'm not a genius, and most of the successful traders I know are fairly humble people. But they do have the ability to perceive in this price chart emotionality. Because that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we trade. And it's not only the emotionality of others. In essence, it's our own emotionality. What I mean by that is this. When we get into a trade and we make money right off the bat, it's profitable we start to get greedy we start to lose control of our sensibilities we start fantasizing and thinking about what we're going to do with them you make 200 dollars you think well i'll go out with my spouse we'll we'll have a dinner i'll show you what i'll show her what kind of genius i am you start to make a thousand dollars you're starting to think of wristwatches to impress your loudmouth brother-in-law you're making ten thousand dollars you're thinking well I, I i can i can get myself the, you know i can get myself that car i've been eyeing for for years you're starting to make real money, you know, 25, 30, 40 days, thinking that's a down payment on a house. You get carried away. And during all this carrying away, you, you will fail to realize that the trade is going against you. And you'll just, because you've been fantasizing and fooling yourself, you'll say, well, I didn't really need the second house. And certainly I don't really need the second car and my watch really, et cetera, until you're down to nothing, if not losing. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the good case. The bad case, of course, is when you immediately go into a loss. And you think to yourself, well, I'm ahead of the market. The market, uh, the, uh, the market will come, the market will prove me right. And after all, the, the trading software doesn't show you a loss until you actually exit the position and it debits your account. So you can continue to fool yourself that you haven't had the loss. This is way worse than the greed that overcomes you uh, because you are frozen in the in the oncoming headlights of the loss. Take the loss. You know, have your stop loss set in a way that you will lose enough money so that you'll only and only you'll only lose such that you'll have what to trade with tomorrow. The stop loss is, 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 is right. you've got to control the emotion your own emotionality that will easily run away from you. And I don't mean to sound condescending or or, or denigrating to anybody here. I'm subject to the same. We're all subject. These are basic human emotions that we're all wired with: greed and fear. And it attacks all of us. And it's the reason you see fleet-footed, uh, swift animals dead on the side of the road. Why? Because they froze in the fear of the oncoming headlights. They didn't know what to do. We, we, we try not to be like that. All right. So enough with the... Um, Charles says fact. What do you refer to, Charles? I, I don't know what you mean by just the word fact. All right. Let's take a look at some of those charts again. Now, natural gas... That's that's definitely a good buy, all right. And and again, we'll, we'll go back to that. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's take a look at the, the natural gas chart. We'll go to the commodities. Take a look at NG, which is uh, right there. And this is natural gas. Now we can see that uh, this is a chart. Let's minimize it. We'll get some more data in. And we'll find uh, this is the outbreak of the war right there. It takes a steep drop off because of the fear in the markets. And then, ba-boom. All right. Then it takes off because we know, and this gets back to the fundamental issue, that um, Russia controls a great deal of the gas that flows into Europe, something on the order of 60%. So in the event of a war, and by the way, what's even more important fundamentally is that um, a large percentage of that 60%, something like 80%, flows through pipelines that traverse the Ukraine. Remember, the Ukraine used to be in the Soviet Union. And so the Soviets invested a tremendous amount of infrastructure 
in piping their gas to Europe during the Cold War through the Ukraine. So people put two and two together fairly quickly, and here's the result. Now, do you think this is going to reverse anytime soon? It's way above the 20, it's way above the 50, and it's miles above the 200. In other words, the market is saying, we value gas today way more than we have over the last 200 trading days, and 200 trading days is the equivalent of a year. So, yeah, we think gas is a good buy. Now, this is, this is a price action trade. You look at that, you see, and, and let's see, this is the highest in, I think, ever in all time. So let's just get a, yeah, I'm pretty sure of that. Let's just get a maximum chart. We'll get a one month chart. This is the one month. No, we're not. Good, all my mistake. Here's the price of gas to here is its all time high. That was November of 05. That was the all time high, at least in the data set we have, and later goes back to 1991. So that's almost 30, over 30 years of data. So we got a while ago. We see that, um, well, uh, volume is, 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 way, is still above average here once the war broke out here. Volume is still pretty high, and so that me and the force index is, is is booming. What that tells me is I'll get to that in a moment, Charles. Um, what that tells me is this, this has got a long way to go. Still, it's about it's way above the 200 moving day average on a 30 year chart. All right. Yeah, this is a 31-year chart, and it's above the 30, way above the 31-year, uh, 200, the 200-month 200 moving average. So these, this is significant enough indicated to me. And again, let me teach you another device we use called the triple screen method. These methods are recommended by Dr. Alexander Elder, uh, who I recommend all of you reading if you're interested in, in what books to read. The good you can do a lot worse than starting with living by dr elder this is the weekly chart still up firmly you look at the multiple charts and multiple time frames in the daily chart you are able to see if the trend holds true through the different time periods so we see that in the chart the trend is up still up even though the last day it's got a slight down you see volume is still very high the force index is high and um well that's all you need to know in this case for me if that convinces you that's that's uh that that's good enough and what you do in this case is to understand the fundamentals the technicals and be confident enough to stay in the trade whether what you know to weather the volatility that comes you see there is a little volatility here it does dip but on the on the on the long term long term in this case uh a month, it's, 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 it has been higher highs, higher lows. This low is higher than this low. This low is higher than this low. That's an uptrend. So you can train your eyes to see. Here's the, here's the trend line. It's up. Clear enough, ladies and gentlemen? Are there questions? Let's stop and take a few of these questions. Um, Charles says, I've been uh, live. My second year paper trading markets have changed. How much different markets? Um, Curious to know if there will be a replay sent out. Yeah, there will be. There'll be a replay. Don't worry, you'll all, you'll all get the film. Um, you'll be able to hear this and see this again. So let's take a look at some here. That's that's natural gas. This, by the way, is uh, MT4. Uh, all of our clients receive this. Oh, let me just uh, digress and take a, a small uh, uh, paid political announcement. We know that I know that there's a lot of people in the room tonight who are not members of our house. They're, you're shopping for. For an online broker, please consider us. Uh, uh, please consider opening an account with us. We're stand up, honest, straightforward brokers. We don't make money for our clients all the time. Okay, we lose like everybody else. But the sine qua non of success in this business is making more than you lose. For lose you will. Make no mistake about it. But if you make more than you lose, you're a success. And there are very few other endeavors in the world where that can be said. Dentist, most of whose patients look good, but some of whose patients look like death is not a successful dentist. This teacher, who's most of whose students seem to do okay, but some of them who you know become wrecks and, and, and degenerates, not really a good teacher. In our business, loss is part of it, but you just have to be able to be prudent enough to earn more than you lose. Um, Rob asks, 
what do the colors of your volume profile on the left side of the screen mean? Also, how do you know if the volume profile nodes show if trades are on the upside or downside as the stock gets a set price? Yeah, it's very easy. I'll show you, Rod, uh, by the color. We'll go back to the uh, previous. The Oh, I see. These are shaded differently. Brown. No, they're not. They're just shaded subtly. That's all. The uh, Let me narrow it a little bit to so a little picture. These outward colors are the, the these colors here are one standard deviation. This and then the other is a half a standard deviation on either side. So that just shows me the distribution of the volume on the price. The colors, the red part is the sellers, the yellow part is the buyers. Same like this. Although in this volume, it doesn't break it down that way. It just gives you uh, the um, overall total. If the majority of volume that took place during this interval was sell, then it's red. That's all. And th and so that doesn't necessarily indicate a lot. On this upward movement, while we saw that this the price, there was a battle here, most of the trades, most of the volume was negative, yet the price continued to rise. So the color is less sensitive. This just gives me a sense of the distribution via the uh, point of control, the center line. So all the points of control tells me that half the volume took place above and half below. So we can see that um, in this data set, most of the volume took place above the point of control. And that's just, yes, you can see that some volume, a great deal of volume took place here. And so that's where the point of control remains, but most of it um, took place above that price. That's all. So I'm over my answer your question. Richard asks, how do you know when to enter the trade using the volume, or how does the volume help you with the entries uh, precision? It doesn't help me with the entries, Richard. What it does is show me that uh, I'm in the, I'm going the right direction. The entries, I'm not, uh, I don't sweat a great deal about uh, determining the perfect entry or the perfect exit. I really don't. If I like to buy on a down tick, of course, I like to sell on an up tick because it gives me a slight advantage, but I don't really, you know, if I get that advantage, great. If not, I, I don't really sweat that too much. I go with the obvious trend. I'm a trend trader. Um, but what won't, but you won't know whether you are going in the right direction until after a few moments in the entry. Very correct, sir. Welcome to capital markets trading. There's no guarantees here. That's absolutely correct. You have to make a subjective personal um, decision based on your sensibilities. That's correct. I couldn't agree more. So can you show us how I would use this indicator? I really don't use the indicator as an indicator of entry. All I can tell you is this, sir. As I see the volume climbing, I see the volume, as I see the price climbing, I see the volume also on the increase. I know there's a lot of sentiment behind this. And sentiment is to price movement what momentum is to uh, physical acceleration. As prices accelerate up and there's a lot more volume behind it, I know there's momentum behind that. I know this is likely to continue and not reverse. That's valuable information for me. Does it help me with the entry? Only insofar as it makes me more convinced I want to belong this asset. Do I enter here? Do I enter there? Not particularly relevant. But, you know, that is to say the volume is not particularly relevant. So these are the commodities. Those of you who... Um, Oh, yes, I should sure, surely point this out. This, oh, this is not the right chart. But let me show you a daily chart of wheat. This is the price of wheat. Uh, between, your, between Russia and the Ukraine, 60% of the world's wheat exports are, 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 um, are either Russian or Ukrainian. That stuff is coming off the market. In fact, if it hasn't already, and certainly not likely to come back, the Ukrainians are unlikely to be able to do much planting. And I should also tell you another thing about wheat. Again, this is fundamental information that I use to then say, okay, it looks like should be an opportunity in wheat. And then I look at the price chart to confirm what I understand about the fundamentals. And here's a tricky case. This is actually an interesting case in terms of our price, um, our price action trading. We saw that it took a huge spike up and then it settled down, but it's still continuing up. I believe, again, for fundamental reasons, this is long, this is hardly done with its upward spiral. In fact, I believe it's going to go very, very high. And that's because 
we are going to enter a huge food shortage, a huge food shortage. And that's because not only the wheat situation in the Ukraine and Russia, but that's because the fertilizer situation, um, a, a great deal of which, a great deal of potash the Russians produce and, and somewhat the Ukrainians also, natural gas also is a huge input into, into fertilizer. That is going to diminish and therefore yields that farmers receive from their crops is going to fall, further driving price up. So in the case of wheat, where it's on this temporary downswing, I would say this could be a good time to buy into wheat. Again, this is my opinion. I could be wrong, but that's how I view this chart. I don't think it's going to continue falling much. Here you can see it's at a it's it's a fairly strong uh, uh, support level. It, it tried to break below and failed. See that? And so I think this is likely to go up. My feeling about wheat. You're getting a sense about how this works. It's subjective, but it has to make sense to you in order to enter a trade. So these are the commodities. Um, we'll take a look at WTI, which I love to trade. I rest my case. This is a daily chart of oil. It's only going, and look at the volume. Va, 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 boom. So again, to those of you who ask, how do I use the volume as, a, as an uh, indicator of entry? I don't. I just use it as an indicator to confirm the trade. And I know damn well, because I've been following oil for 40 years, that the oil markets are going to continue to tighten. Uh, yes, the Americans are going to try to pump more, but keep in mind, Russian oil is falling off the market. Whatever is being peddled by the Russians is selling at a deep discount in China and um, not being bought pretty much by anybody else. Maybe the Indians, again, on the black market at a deep discount, but and, 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 and uh, I, I revert here to fundamental economics, basic price, price uh, 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 supply and demand economics. Economics, frankly, classical economics doesn't tell us that much. It's mostly full of shit. But when it comes to some things, it tells us a lot. When the demand is stable and supply falls off, there's only one thing that can happen. Price goes up. And to use a technical term, which I don't want to confuse you with, but I like to use it because it's valuable, energy consumption is highly inelastic. In other words, as price goes up, people continue to buy. Those of you who have to fill your cars to get to work at higher gas prices are doing so. Few of you are saying, well, I'll just, I'll walk to work, I'll take the bus. No, it doesn't really happen. And certainly with, with, the, with the giant users of, of fuel, they just charge more or pass it on or whatever they do. So this is likely to continue moving up. Again, complicated? No, it's not. I tried to make that clear earlier on. Let's take a look at uh, just another class of assets. And I do want to point something out to you. Those of you who are not familiar with the bonds, um, oh, that's brand, sorry, I meant bonds. Um, take a look at this. These are the prices, not the yield, the prices of bonds. As inflation hits, bonds become less valuable and they sell off. Inflation is here. Inflation is here. There's no two ways about it. And so the price of bonds, this has been a fabulous shorting opportunity. It's likely to continue to be so. The, as the interest rates go up, you can see as the first interest rates uh, started to rise, there's a slight turnaround with this. But I, I personally don't believe that interest rates are going to rise fast enough to counter the inflationary pressures, and therefore there'll be a continued selling of the bonds. Fundamental information, to be sure. But that's how I see it. Um, Richard asked, where will this recording be posted to to rewatch it? I think I missed some gems. Why, thank you very much for the compliment, sir. You will all receive a link uh, to the recording. Uh, it takes an hour or so to process the, uh, put it into a MP4 file, but you'll be able to get the link and you'll be able to watch it as many times as you like. Uh, and speaking of that, I also want to remind you that our next session will be uh, a week from tomorrow, and that's the live trading event on the uh, non-farm payroll report at 12. Uh, GMT, and that's a live trading session where we um, understand, uh, we learn a little bit about the non-farm payroll reports, the most widely, one of the most widely attended uh, uh, events on the economic monthly economic calendar. It's crucially important indicator for the U.S. economy, and the results often, not always, but often drive the U.S. dollar. And so let's take a look at currencies, just for the sake of thoroughness. We'll look at, uh, I. 
we have, I have a lot of F FX on the chart, so I break them into three. Here is here is some of the majors, the um, dollar yen. We see this, it's still got a 117 handle, it hit a 134 handle not long ago. The yen is weakening and continues to, and the Jap Bank of Japan likes it that way. It's not like, this is not likely to re, uh, to revert back to the old, you know, 100, 105 handle. I'll break, make, break this up for you a little more. Once it takes off here, and again, this is the, um, this is the beginning of the pandemic. Japanese want their export-driven economy to thrive in the face of a worldwide plague, and so they slowly allow their, and then here more quickly, allow their currency to weaken. They are not raising interest rates. The Bank of Japan is, the Bank of Japan, I won't go into excessive detail about the Bank of Japan, but it's worth learning about. Um, so that's a good position again. Is this genius? Do I need any fancy pants? uh indicators i look at the trends i follow them i try to understand what's driving them and try to hopefully take a few dollars out of the market in the process um one of i think the only trade i'm currently involved in right now the only open trade i have and, I, and it's been open for weeks by me is oh sorry I, uh, I don't know how i got to this is um oh sorry is um this trade, which I can show you, this tr trade is, uh, yeah, yeah, I've been doing nicely out of this trade. This is the Turkish lira. See my point? This is the kind of, oh yes, this is where I entered the trade. This is the on the MT4 trade. I've been, and I've been in and out of this trade <clears throat> many, many times over the last 18 months. This trade is continuing to make money. It's still in the in the green. And so again, here, I know the fundamentals involved. I don't have any sound, says Andy. I believe, oh, did I turn off the sound? No, I I believe I'm still putting out sound. I Yeah, the sound is still going out, Andy. It's like I'm telling him it's on there. He can't hear me. So, um, yeah, Turkish lira, dollar lira, up, up, and away. The Turkish lira is going to continue to weaken for some time. That's a good position. Um, to the yen weakening. The Hong Kong dollar, the the um, here's an interesting one where we uh, I want to show you. I want to show you, show you this. This is dollar yuan in the daily chart. This is the Chinese offshore renminbi called the yuan. Again, this is you, you look at these trades, you sort of know what to do. That's what price action trading is about. Do I do I need to draw a trend line here? Do I do I, you know, I might put my stop loss, my take profit there. I might put my stop loss here. But look at the volume. Tremendous sentiment behind this. So my my message to you, ladies, and I'm going to open up the floor to some questions because I think I've made my point. Price action trading involves you looking at the chart and seeing if you can understand what the markets are thinking and feeling. It's not that hard. That's why I say, that's why in the title, I, I, I mentioned that it's not daunting. Don't be intimidated by price action trading. It's what it's all about. It's recognizing a pattern and going with it. Now, if you think it's going, if, you know, if it's trying, it's, try, it's tried once here, it failed and came down, it's trying again. If we look at the four hour chart, can we see anything about this? It's trying again, and here there's a short, let's look at the uh, 15, 15 minute chart. It's dancing around this resistance line pretty serious. It doesn't look like it can go above it. So looking at the same chart in a different time frame where the volume drops off, although this is this is the middle of the night uh, in uh, in China, so you're going to see a drop off here. The volume is falling. This might be a good short position on the 15-minute chart. Take a short, watch it go down. On the daily chart, I, I, I don't think so. So you see my point about the subjectivity in the time frame. So it's a crucially important variable. So let's open up the floor to some questions, ladies and gentlemen, and um, let's see if I can uh, answer some questions. Uh, we don't have the dinar, Shekhar. We don't trade the, uh, the Saudi dinar. We have it, but it, surprisingly, it doesn't actually trade, believe it or not. Um, is that the, I think this is the RAND. No, here we do. Have, here's the dinar, but it doesn't. It's it's a weird asset. It's highly controlled, and it's you can see 
all of those, those signs are the signs of a highly controlled and regulated market. We don't. That's why it's not available. We can't. We don't. We can't. We don't make a market in this. It's too. It's too. It's too uh, uh, fickle for us. Um, what moving averages do you use? The uh, eight, fourteen, twenty, fifty. No, I use the the uh, twenty, fifty, and two hundred. Well, um, Paul says you seem a little disorganized. Well, maybe I am. Um, so uh, let me just say also, ladies and gentlemen, that we have a poll and a survey that I, we'd be very happy if you took a few moments and filled out at the end of the session. It helps us, it guides us into what subjects you may be looking for and uh, ways to improve the, the production. Oh, only kidding. Okay, that's good. Um, how do you mark the support and resistance, asks uh, uh, Rohin. With my eye. With my eye. See, see, I can see, again, and that's why I say, uh, price action trading is is the ability to use your eyeballs. You can see in this chart, this is the dollar uh, uh, British real. You can see that price is this is a, was a resist this is a resistance point. It can't get above it. Tried, failed. Tried, failed miserably. Tried again and failed. Do I do I need to mark that with a line? I can see it with my eyes. And if I if I'm looking at the for the support, I can see this is the support level. Dipped below, but went above. Gonna, it's going to try and hit it again. You see my point? It's not that complicated. And I don't want you to feel like it's complicated. I don't want you to feel that you need to be some sort of genius to trade or you need tools that you don't have at your at your uh, access to. You have all the tools you need to have access to. Your eyeballs, your ability to read a newspaper, and your ability to look at a chart critically. Um, Richard asks, I know you said my name multiple times, but now I would like to believe that I asked a very valuable question. But the 2050 200 moving out, also known as the golden cross, how does it work and how does it help you trade? Oh, that's easy. Rich, when the, when the moving averages, when, when a price goes below, this is the uh, Polish uh, Zloty. When the price bakes below the, the uh, 200 day move, that's called the death cross. That means that the market now values less, um, thinks it's the, the, the zloty, the, I think this is the euro zloty, is worth less than it has in the last year. That's a sign of, of, of that's a strong sign. It broke the 20, it broke the 50, now it broke the 200. Notice also on tremendous volume, signifying that there's a lot of sentiment behind that. So if we drill down, we see, we see that, that it's trying to fight back unsuccessfully. Even on the one hour, you'll see for sure not. And uh, that's a, that that's what those breaking. The, that's why I have the moving averages on the chart. It shows me um, market the markets. The, it shows me how the market's feeling. That's all based on its 20, 20 pink, fifty, and two hundred. Uh, this is a day a sentiment. Um, ah, having. It's not really disorganized, says uh, Sibusio, Sibusisa. It's just that I have too much to share in a short period of time. Yeah, I, that's that's true. And there's nothing I can do but help ask you to bear with me, sign up for more of these sessions, open an account with us, have access to more of our product, get more informed. That I, this is only, in fact, we're coming into an hour here, which is usually the maximum time I like to a lot to these. People just drop off. They can't bear me for much longer than that. Um, can you please ask Shekhar, enlighten me on how to trade on silver and the dollar? Um, what is the INR, Shekhar? Um, thank you, Paul. I appreciate the compliment. Um, uh, the Indian rupee. We don't. We don't. Uh, we don't have a market. We don't make a market in the Indian rupees, Shekhar. I'm sorry. Um, although we could. The Indian economy is fascinating right now, and I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll just digress a moment. Um, India, India has always been a highly independent country. You can talk about disorganized. There's no place on earth less organized than India. But having said that, they're the world's largest free democracy. And while there is, there is a great deal of wealth in India, there's also a great deal of poverty. But they're free. And that's why I maintain, for no more reason than that, that they will one day surpass the Chinese because the Chinese are prisoners in their own country, held under the ruthless and brutal thumb of the Chinese Communist Party. The Indians are not like that. They struggle. They're, they, they have all sorts of problems. 
but freedom is not one of them. And they are getting their act together. They've been fiercely independent. They're one of the few countries that have not outwardly condemned Russia. And there's a reason for that, by the way, and I'll digress a little bit further at that and then think about ending soon. There are those who, well, actually, there aren't many of us who say that the West could have avoided this war in the Ukraine. That Putin is not a madman or a megalomaniac or, or, or all of the other things they ascribe to him, but that he's doing what what the Americans would do or would have done had Khrushchev not taken the missiles out of Cuba in 1963. So there's a case to be made for the fact that Putin is not, I mean, he's vicious and brutal and he's, he's taking the entire nation apart, but he believes in that's, that's, that, that's, a, that's a necessary evil to keep NATO from absorbing a country that he believes is not their domain. You can argue that or not, but the Indians believe it. The Indian government believed it anyway, and they're fiercely independent about it. And the Indians, by the way, released 1.5 million tons of wheat and sold it to, 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 the, to the Egyptians because they realized the Egyptians, sooner or later, are going to be crushed by their wheat importation problems. And the Indians took steps to forestall that. So the Indian economy and the Indian government, despite its problems, are, are a very worthy uh, subject of our interest. Um, what sectors do you think are going to be for a while? What sectors do you think are going to be for a while, Paul? Asks, I'm not sure I understand. So energy, cybersecurity, energy for sure. Energy for sure. This this panacea, this this chimera we have about a green electric economy is nonsense. Anybody's been to the roof of the building they work in and seen the industrial air conditioning system that sits like in my I speak of my building, modest 18-story office building. Um, there's a giant air conditioning system on the roof. It would take enough. It would take uh, enough solar energy panels to, 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 to in the whole city that I live in to just to power that system. We're not going to get anywhere near green, zero carbon energy supplies for years. We're going to be consuming hydrocarbons for a long time in the future, and their price is likely to continue. Um, do I trade in silver? What's your call if you can share? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I have been avoiding gold. I, I always preferred silver over gold. I find gold too weird, frankly, to, to get involved in because it's got so many other characteristics besides just being a, a besides being a, an industrial metal. It's, uh, it's got some weird characteristics to it. People love it. They, the Indians particularly uh, store a great deal of their own personal wealth in gold. I like silver. And so let's take a look at the silver and dollars here it is dollar silver uh what is it? it's got a 22 handle it's pretty high actually 22 handle for silver is is, is pretty it's pretty high yeah you can see silver it's in a trading in a in a channel now i would probably short it if i were if i were trading it. it's dancing right at that 200 day moving average so i'm not a 200 week moving average i should say let's go to the daily again it's well below the daily moving average this looks like a short this looks like a uh a short to me, Sheka. Um, uh, I bought oil. Yeah, oil's a good good position to hold, Paul, for sure. Um, Andy says he missed the first fight. You'll get a you'll get a link to the recording, Andy. My next seminar is going to be on Friday, the uh, first, the third rather of uh, May, the first Friday of every month. The non farm payroll report comes out, and um, and I do a live trading event then. After that, there's one on Thursday the 20th. Um, we talk about do we buy banks and sell tech? Uh, and that's, by the way, at uh, 20 100 GMT hours, uh, moving it uh, up a little bit uh, or back a little bit so that more people can join. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my pleasure, Shekhar. It's a, it was a pleasure having you in the room. Let me, uh, the, let me just uh, take my leave of you and say that um, – Again, for those of you who are considering opening a, uh, an online trading account with a broker, do consider opening an account with us. We're stand-up, straightforward brokers, and we can take tonight's session as an indicator of the kind of work we produce for our clients. Uh, those of you who are regulars in the house know that this is the kind of work uh, and the kind of product you receive from us. Um, and so, therefore, let me say that on behalf of the staff and the management here of Excel, ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Seth Julian. Wishing you all, ladies and gentlemen, the ability to trade with confidence. Bye-bye for now.
My pleasure, Elliot. It's good to see you again. Andy asked what my position on Amazon is right now. Uh, I don't like Amazon for a lot of reasons. I don't like the big fat monopolists. I don't like, I don't, I, I think they have too much power. Their profits are outrageous and I think they're due for a fall. I don't know when. I just don't like them because I don't like, I don't like uh, big, overpowerful monopolists. That's my personal view. Um, my pleasure, Sibusi. It's always good to see you in the room. Thank you all for the kind words. It's very, I, I appreciate the compliments very much. Thank you. Thank you, Roy. Thank, thank you all. It, it, I, I really like hearing this. And please, please remember, fill out the survey, fill out the, um, the uh, poll. It helps us out a lot. My pleasure, Oki. Good to see you again. My pleasure, Cornelius. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure, Rafael. Thank you for joining us tonight. Sunday, welcome to the room. Hope to see you again. You too, Aaron. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you all and uh, hope to see you all again soon. Don't see the link for the poll. Uh, I don't know where it is myself, Giselle, but I know it's there and you'll definitely see it. So um, see you next week, Paul. Uh, it's there somewhere. You should be able, it'll they send it to you maybe, maybe get sent after the session. I'm not sure actually, but um, you'll be able to have access to it, I assure you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen that'll be it. Good night. See you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you, Chapiza. My pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye, Shekhar. Bye again.